Welcome to the Pitchin' and Sippin' podcast, where we talk PR trends and tips over sips and meet a wide range of incredible founders, PR pros, and members of the media. I'm Lexi Smith, a former workaholic VP of PR and marketing turned two-time entrepreneur, founder of the PR Bar Inc., business and PR coach, new mama, and self-proclaimed connoisseur of puns, pizza, and wine. I'm a huge believer that knowledge is power and kindness never goes out of style. Think of this show as a way to uplevel your business and career over happy hour. Now let's get to pitching and sipping. Hi guys, this week we are doing a mini-sode and I decided to take you behind the scenes on how both myself and my team approach customizing and creating pitch angles for journalists. So if you're a longtime listener or you're someone who's already in the PR industry, you're probably not unfamiliar with the concept that in 2023, bulk pitching does not work. In fact, one of my biggest pet peeves or pet peeves in the sense that a lack of information is when someone comes to me with a pitch. They say, I have a pitch. I'm ready to go. And I go, great. A pitch for who? Oh, for the media. No, 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 no. Pause, right? No longer can we have one pitch that works effectively for every single writer and every single outlet out there. Think about it, right? Every outlet is different. Every writer is different. And as I talk through today and how my team goes about creating these angles, I think it'll become a lot more apparent as to why. So here we go. How to customize or how to come up with a custom pitch angle for a journalist. First and foremost, start with coming up with a general theme. So whether this is for yourself or a client, I'm going to talk high level about one of my clients today. Um, We've been going after, it's a travel company, a travel tech company, and recently we decided to do a campaign around spring break. So I knew we wanted to go after something regarding spring break, and our target audience was moms, period. That was a general theme. So start with your general theme. Is it related to a calendar? Is there a launch coming up? Is it something to do with your founder? High level, get an idea of the type of pitch that you want to pursue, because this is going to allow you to identify outlets and then proper contacts at outlets. Now, this episode, we're not going to go into necessarily how to select the perfect contact. What we're going to do is you have the contact, now what? How do you take that general theme and customize it for that specific contact? Okay, first thing you do is what I call professional stalking. Just kidding, but not, but kidding, but not. Okay, we can also call this research. We're going to want to research the heck out of this individual. And what are we researching? First and foremost, their byline page, right? looking at the articles they've written for whatever outlet you've selected. If they're a freelance journalist or someone that writes for more than one, which is becoming more and more commonplace, you're going to also want to search for their portfolio to get an understanding of their entire body of work. You're going to want to look for public-facing social media links. Twitter is a big one. Do they have a LinkedIn? Do they have an Instagram? I really like Twitter because it's an inside view into their personality type. So big, big fan there. Um, And you're really going to want to start to consume content and the things you're going to be looking for. You're going to want to pay really, really close attention to the types of stories they cover. Are they someone who's producing roundups or listicles? Are they doing feature stories? Are they doing first person essays? Are they doing how to articles? Do you see that they're routinely producing a certain series of sorts? So know if it's someone who's doing roundups that only feature affiliate links, right? So do your due diligence and not just reading the headlines, but clicking in and reading through to understand the types, holistically, the types of articles that they produce. Also note, are they only covering breaking news? Or are these more evergreen topics? Are they jumping on top of trends? So for this client, right, spring break is not really evergreen. We were talking or we were tying into a a timely situation. Um, So that's just an example there. So 
You also, oh, here's a big one. Don't forget to notice their publishing frequency. When was the last time they published and how frequently are they publishing at this given outlet? Big mistake I see made is someone will find a writer at an outlet that wrote an article a year ago. If you go to their byline page and they haven't written an article in a year, they probably aren't writing for that article still. So get an understanding of how frequently they're producing content. Okay, so now what? I want you to go back through, you've noticed all these general things about them, and start paying really close attention to the topics of articles they've written about recently, because we do not want to pitch them the same thing they just wrote about. So for my example that I've been going through, we're going after travel. Generally, we're going for moms and spring break. If I find a writer that just produced an article or just wrote something talking about how to help moms with spring break, it's not the time to pitch that again, right? They just wrote about that. So using all of this information, now we can take that general theme and get a lot more specific. So let me talk you through an example um, for this, again, client. We identified the parenting.com as a outlet of choice, and we found a writer that produced advice columns for moms. So what we let that do is craft an angle in a style of headline format that she writes that allows her to provide advice to moms going on spring break. And our client was going to be used in such as an expert resource. So here's another key part of this. Where does your client tie in? How can your client, or if you're doing it yourself, how can your business help this writer with what they're currently already producing. So are you a hero part of the article? Are you a headliner or are you a supporting source? Now, of course, we all want to be the hero, but that's not always the case. If this given journalist, for example, is only producing advice columns, then there not, might, might not be an opportunity for them to feature you or your client. So you have to be really thoughtful, intentional, and objective with where your story or where your assets can tie in. So I'm gonna give you guys another example here. Another client, we were going after HR folks, that was our audience, and the general theme was work perks. So we narrowed down, found a outlet that we wanted to pitch, identified a writer, identified that this writer produces a very specific type, a series of articles called WTF, and then she talks about kind of a trending buzzword. Well, there was a trending buzzword that my client knew a lot about. So we reached out, we pitched, not my client as the headline, but the series, we pitched her a new series idea. And then our client became a supplemental source for her to use and quote in the article. And guess what she did? She picked it up, it was published. I used our headline word for word. So something you might be noting if you are new to PR, whether you're once again DIYing or you're in the industry itself, is this is timely. This isn't fast, right? This, this is intentional. This is a process. The process becomes shorter when you decide to stick to a niche or you do this a little bit longer and you take meticulous notes. That being said, if you haven't looked at your media list in a few months, don't rely on your three month or six month ago notes. Double check that this writer is still at the same outlet, that they're still covering the same beats and really look at what have they been publishing recently. And remember this, this is a best practice for, for all pitching. The journalist doesn't owe you anything. So don't go into that thinking that you're the bee's knees and they would be so lucky to write about you or your client. Remember, how can you serve them? How can your story or your client's story serve their readers? Okay, so that was just a little bit behind the scenes into how my team and I go about creating a custom pitch angle. Again, high level recap, you start with that general theme. You then do a bunch of research or professional stalking. 
which can then inform you to take that general theme into something a lot more specific. We can take one general theme and have 15 different pitches because we have 15 different people. We might call it our spring break campaign, but no two pitches look the same. Now, if you have any questions, permission to slide into my Instagram DMs at the PR bar underscore Inc. If you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment, or you can always hit up my email, which is Lexi at the PR bar Inc.com. I'd also love to hear how you guys go about customizing your pitch angles. Um, what are the techniques, tips, tricks, tools of the trade that you use? Always, always looking to learn. So thanks for listening. Until next time on the Pitchin' and Sippin' Podcast. Hey guys, if you are enjoying the Pitchin' and Sippin' podcast, please do me a huge favor and leave a review wherever you are listening. If you want to connect with me to learn more about the PR Bar Inc., you can do so on Instagram at the PR Bar underscore Inc., or you can check out my website at theprbarinc.com. Cheers! Cheers!